Hello everyone, it is the Build Up Show, Leeds United Liverpool Monday night game and the quest for top four, third place, whatever, um, is on. Uh, the Champions League is done, it will not be a thing for us this season, but the league is very much a uh, thing that Liverpool need to put all their focus and efforts into. And uh, Chris, just simply, yeah, no more distractions here. No. No, no. more excuses, top four or failure. Top four or failure, absolutely. Um it's as, it's as simple as that, isn't it, really? I mean, it's not a world that I wanted to be in, but we are here and the, the side need to go out there and make sure that they're all playing Champions League football next season, to be quite honest with you, because Jürgen sort of alluded to it, didn't he, um, in one of his press conferences, don't know whether it was post-Madrid or pre-Madrid or whatever, is like, we need it for more reasons than footballing reasons as a football club. You know, yeah. the money side of things is massive. Uh, if we want to continue to attract the best players, then you do really have to be in the Champions League. If you want to keep your best players, then you have to be in the Champions League. It all starts this weekend at Leeds. No, no, absolutely. I completely agree with that. We've got loads of things to discuss here. It's obviously Chris Page Jack in the studio with me, Paul Machen, Ross Chanley and John Machen joining us for this one. Uh, we're going to be talking about Leeds United. We're going to be talking about who we play who starts this game, who is on the bench, and a whole lot more as well. Uh, before we do, yes, do go and check out the Super 6 YouTube channel. Chris Pajak starred on the whole DL show this week, ranking the Premier League's best centre-halves of all time. Here's a little clip of that. For me, like, Vidic is probably the third best Premier League centre-half for Manchester United. Um, yeah, I'd have Rio Ferdinand great. ranked number one. I'd have Yapstam ranked number two. Um, and I'd have... Nemanja, uh, Nemanja Vidic ranked number three now I can understand people wanting to place Vidic above Stan because of how many trophies he won there um, I think that Ferdinand and Vidic partnership is what made that Manchester United so great and, I, and and that's why I think I've ranked Virgil van Dijk above Vidic is, is simply from the fact that you know I think a lot of players could have played alongside Real Ferdinand and Manchester United won leagues and that's not to take away anything from Vidic because I think he was fantastic. I really do. But I don't think he would have had the impact on his own in the same way that maybe a Virgil van Dijk has had the impact at Liverpool Football Club. Yep, good fun. It was actually. I mean, I did say during the show, I think they've got the list completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, because there's no way that Rio Ferdinand's not in that list. Yeah. Um, and yet, the third best Man United centre half, as the clip probably shows there, in my opinion, was ranked uh, uh, in That's one the of the top five. Yeah. Um, go figure. Like, I mean, Rio Ferdinand and the Yapsan for me were, were better players than the Man United because I got to watch him play against Liverpool and get sent off like three times. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Torres scored loads of goals. So <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go and check out that show. Uh, we'll put the link in the description underneath. Go through, leave a comment, leave a like on there, and show some support for Chris Pajak as well. Uh, and there's a little poll on there. Do it, do it tab. now. So make sure you vote for anyone but Chris. Uh, we've yet, either of us has yet to hold I don't the like L. that. No, 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 no. I don't want to spread your votes around. I want it focused, focused Flav. on Akeem. Akeem, please. Well, Flav's got like, had 52% Flav voted, of the Flav votes voted so for Virgil van Dijk. So Akeem, yeah? Okay. Akeem, because we don't vote against Virgil. Okay, sounds. Okay. He, wanted, he had Virgil ranked as his number one because he wanted to join up with our fan base. Oh, right. It's, it was tactical and it's clearly working he's, because I'm now here saying don't vote for Flav. He's miles away <laughs> with losing that, but losing it. The, Is he? At this point, yeah, for Akeem was on 20. I voted for Akeem. He was on 25%. Flav was on 52% of the vote when I checked this morning. <laughs> he voted for Virgil. Yeah. It was the e People just don't like Flav. <laughs> clearly, that's what it is. Anyway, just make sure that you don't vote for Chris in that and all that, and it'll be good. But yeah, go over there and, 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 and leave a like and all that stuff. That'd be great. Right. Liverpool leads. We can't. Talk around it anymore, Dad. Um, it's a, it's, a, it. There's nothing but big games remaining. You know, some of them are big games on paper. Some of them are, are less so. But regardless of this fact, you know, we've managed to get ourselves, we've dragged ourselves back into some semblance of form. Um, but it's all for nothing. If, if we don't, because, you know, the, you can take Champions League disappointment on the chin. You can lose. You can get knocked out of Real Madrid any season. Um, but we're now in a situation where, as Chris pointed out at the top line here, if we don't get into it again, there's no way to avenge that disappointment. No, I mean, every, every season recently, we'd have looked at these remaining games and say, we've only got one tough game and that's at Old Trafford. Yeah. The rest of them are, you know, just uh, cannon fodder for us. But unfortunately this season, every single one of them is a tough game. We could lose any of them on the way we play. And we've got to hope that some of the spark we've shown in recent weeks, um, it, it will carry us through to because we need to win every game. 
yeah. to be guaranteed, I think. And you know, we can't say anymore, oh, we've got a really bad defence and it's knocked on into midfield and, you know, it, it, how the hell are we supposed to play properly? I mean, the defence is fine. You know, it, the, we haven't got the greatest centre-backs in the world, but they're doing a decent job. Yeah. The midfield, we have all our good players available, apart from Henderson, everyone else is available to play. Um, I, I mean, Ox came on against Real Madrid, like a 10-minute cameo, looked really back to his best in terms of pace, mm -hmm. you know, and ability. Um, so we've got competition for places we've got everything there if we if we just get our act together yeah we're not that we're not our best selves ross and, and i think you know we should go without saying unless you're just joining us and liverpool you know, for the first time today this is not the best this is not the best version of liverpool but it, it's my dad's point spot on there you know and there are they've been mitigating circumstances all season long they've, they've contributed to us being in the position that we're in but now there's just the games that are left to be played, there are the points left to be played for, and the players that we've got available to us. Um, and you know, we, we're not in, we're not battling for the title, and we're not battling for the European Cup. So we don't need to be a perfect team. We don't need to have eleven world class players on the field. You know what I mean? We don't need a team full of born, proven winners. You don't need that to finish in the top four, to finish third or fourth. But we do need to see that level of endeavour, I think, that we showed against Real Madrid and that we've seen in recent weeks, that is the bar. That is the bare minimum bar. If we fall beneath that, we will not finish in the top four. If we at least maintain that standard, we give ourselves every chance. Yeah, um, all of that and perfect results. Um, otherwise, like John says, it's, it's just not going to happen. I know there's, there's a lot going on around us, but we need to focus on ourselves right now. And I'll just echo what I said in the final word. If we play like we did in the first 45 minutes of that game or certainly an hour of Real Madrid in the, in the second leg, I think we'll be fine, you know, as long as, as, long as we sit the ball on the back of the net and, and do that. But, you know, the, the, the bigger picture of that was you can play with that intensity without fans. You can play because that was do or die. That game was do or die. Every game that we've got left now is do or die. And don't, yeah. then we're not going to make top four. We're not going to be in the Champions League. The repercussions of that are, are ridiculous in terms of finances or, you know, question marks and what, what goes on in the summer. But we need to get there. We need to go, you know, it's, we've all said we pissed away a season. Like top four, is, for me, is success with everything that's gone on. Mm -hmm. Gone through to all the fans that you, you can go, you can go out there and go and achieve that. And um, you know yeah. we have built on the defence, we have built a relationship with Kabak and Phillips. Good, we got our, our choices in the field, like John said. But Leeds are no mugs. Like I'm, I'm quite nervous for this game. You know, they're going to match us yeah. for intent. They're going to match us for for runners, like till a till a dying seconds. They just beat in Manchester City. They've had a week off. They had a man sent off in that game as well. Their confidence is going to be through the roof, and they're thinking, well, you you just run your asses against Real Madrid. Fine, bring it on. It's it's one of them. It's, it, it, you, the leads are a uh, are a challenge. They gave us a hell of a game at the start of the season, and that was with Virgil Van Dijk in, in the team, who had a, a little bit of a stinker in that match. Lest we forget. Um, well, they also showed everybody our weaknesses. If you remember, was yeah. it Harrison's goal? Was the ball over Trent Alexander Arnold? The cut inside and the finish. That unfortunately showed everyone else how to score against Liverpool this season. And, you know, we were able to go on and, of course, get the victory and stuff. But they're, they're no mugs. Like, they lose a lot of games, they win a lot of games. I think, am I right in saying they've won 14, lost 14? Well, what's interesting, they've, they've, they've got a they've zero, got goal, zero goal difference. Goal difference. Yeah. They're 10th, they're exactly halfway in the league with winning as many games as they've lost and drawing three maybe in yeah. the middle and zero goal difference. It's perfect. Like, yeah. you couldn't get... That's a middle-of-the-road road it, team, isn't it? it? Shows you the points there though, because this is why it's a it's a mad game. Is that you've got a you've got a very good chance of beating Leeds United because you're not you're tenth for a reason, but that also you don't know what Leeds is going to turn up because as we said, we were sat here last week with that City Leeds game on. It was on in the background, and we you know we were giving it a half sort of attention, and we were like, oh, this is the point at which Man City just just do Man City the best here. team in the world against ten men. I said this is going to be four nil yeah. <laughs> or four one. I think yeah. maybe something like that. And but Leeds did what you know they've they, again they capitalised on maybe a, a fatigued Manchester City side, the side that was rotated yeah. as well. You know, it so it shows that, and again, as Ross mentioned, with ten men, we'll talk about who you know who we pick individually after the break. But it shows that you you can't afford to take your eyes off this because you know, yeah, you could you could put up you could rotate aside and beat Leeds. But there's every chance that you know, even if you put your very best team out, Leeds give you the hell of a game. Yeah, they do, and they've got their injury problems as well. I believe I think the main centre back 
is going to be out, isn't it? Is it Cooper or something like that? I think he's going to be out. Were well, you featured on the LUTV? It was a YouTube channel or TV channel this week? YouTube. Surely you should have all the, yeah. the hot I mean, insights. I didn't really care what they were saying. They was, <laughs> I was there for my opinions on Liverpool. I wasn't, I didn't give a shit about Liverpool. Um, Cooper nah, was the guy who got sent off. All right, there who? you go. Cooper was the guy who got, got sent off. He's, he's missing then, that's injured. Same difference, you know what I mean? So he's missing three games. Could have been injured. He's, he's, he's been sent off, so he's missing. So they've got the problems there, haven't they, at centre-half? I think they've... That, like us, they've had a lot of centre back partnerships throughout the course of the season. Actually, so they're they're actually well versed in having to play different centre halves and stuff like that. So, but yeah, um, they're they're a good side and they're going to press the hell out of us, mm-hmm. which is something that we kind of haven't had for a little while, you know. And and that's going to probably pose its own challenges for us because most teams just sit off and these will not sit off yeah I mean they get to do the best of us and you're right the, the, the problem is you, you defend resolutely you get men behind the ball you're physical you, 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 you're you scrappy you, you compete for everything and then you smash balls into channels over the top and chase it down with pace it's every team's weakness <laughs> with the exception of like Burnley and, and and the classic Stoke and whatever so no they definitely will definitely will cause us problems and they'll need to be at the best um, right we're going to discuss who starts who plays for Liverpool and what we need to do in this football Why match. is it not Burnley's weaknesses? Is, is it because it, is, is it one of those classic if you've got any strengths you've not got any weaknesses <laughs> thing? It's more you bash the ball into the channels and it just drops neatly at the feet of their fullbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Great. <laughs> Bang! Go straight back where it came from. Yeah, definitely. The biggest game of footy tennis you've ever seen <laughs> over the midfield as the net. What a net in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, Sal. Uh, we have got a trivia question to test. It's a nice easy one this week. I'm sure everyone will get it because it's only, we only take, have to cast your mind back to the start of the season and that didn't feel like it was five years ago, right? Um, <laughs> name the start and 11 that Liverpool put out in our 4-3 win over Leeds at the start of the season. Simple as that. Uh, we'll be back with the answer very shortly. Graham Souness is the best player I've ever played with in my life. Scoring two goals in two European Cup finals, to lift a trophy twice, you know, it's a, it's a brilliant legacy, isn't it? Absolute genius, little scholarship from the South Downs, who went on to do magical things for us. Legend in all aspects of the game. When you're talking about someone like Steve Highway, that's the word. He was a forerunner of the modern footballer, Kevin Keegan. I think he'd fit perfectly in the modern world. I don't think there's ever been, and I don't think there ever will be, a bigger figure in Liverpool's history than Kenny Dalglish. I'll tell you, we played some good stuff that day, we really did. But, you know, a fantastic relief and, uh, oh, you know, when the, when the final whistle went. I just did a little jump. Terrible, terrible celebration. One of the worst ever. Nobody's ever done it since, by the way. That's the jump. Yes, check out Cop Chronicles episodes one to six of the first series are streaming now on the RedmenTV.com. We've actually got a bit of a feature on that. I sat down with the director, Tom Dutton, and Ooh. that's going to be going out this weekend on the YouTube channel. So keep your eyes peeled for that. So if you don't, if you're not sold on just the on the sizzle reels uh, and you want to know a little bit more about it and the motivations and some of the insight and that, we did a great bit on the podcast on it, but we've also got a bit of a sit down that's coming out. Uh, yeah, it's going out there Friday night on the YouTube channel. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, starting eleven from our fourth. Three win at Leeds United. Um, Chris Page, do you want to take a run at it? Allison, Trent. I'm just checking, you didn't have them on the screen there. That's fine. Yep. Gomez. Yep. Van Dyke. Yes. Robertson. Yes. Mane, Salah, Firmino. Yes. Henderson. Yep. Wijnaldum. Yes. Cater. Yes, get in, Chris Pajak. If you got that all, you've all researched that very well, just like Chris. Um, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, give a like on the video if you got that right. If you got it wrong, give a like on the video as well. Um, big question then, Dad. James Milner going up against his boyhood team. There's a chance that he, you know, there's a lot of talk about whether he'll end up there before his career ends. He's been brilliant uh, he was brilliant against Madrid he's, he's added something to the midfield that we've definitely lost in the absence of Jordan Henderson but he's 35 years old does he keep his place in the midfield or the team for you um, I think so just about I mean it's a long way off the Leeds game isn't it so he's got time to recover yeah. um, I mean I, I, I would almost tend to think we should play the same 11 every game for the till the rest of the season to be honest 
Yeah. But I'm not sure Milner will play every game, but he certainly will play some of them. Yeah. Um, and then it's a question of whether Thiago plays with Fabinho, which is what I would do, or whether he, you know, throws in the Milner Wijnaldum Fabinho axis. It's it's tough because Ross, the challenge that we've got facing us between now and the end of the season is that the you know it was mentioned by my dad earlier on. You know, United are the only you know top in inverted commas team that we've we've got. There are a bunch of teams that on paper you're meant to beat, but actually the teams that we've really struggled against this season to a variety of degrees. There might be a temptation to go with the tried and tested. So by all means, put Milner in there and go with the established front three, keep Jota and, and Thiago as bench options. But I don't know that... I don't think that necessarily solves the problems that we're going to be coming up against. We're still going to, we're still going to have far more games where our job is 90 minutes of breaking down the opposition. Even if Leeds isn't necessarily that game, I think it will have elements of it. People have got the blueprints on how to, how to frustrate draw with and occasionally beat Liverpool now. So what do you do? Do you do you, do you, is this a chance now where you've had a bit of time? Do we start leading towards best for forward, get the four the four main men up front and just go for it? Possibly. Um I think it's different because it's Leeds and I think it's also different in the sense of you you touched on where they are in the in the league. They've got nothing to lose. So you know and the way that they play and be the way Bielsa plays doesn't change. They'll go toe to toe with Liverpool. So I was tempted to say Thiago, but is Thiago a runner? Is Thiago going to get you up, up and up and down the pitch? You know, is he going to? We saw him last night. He came on. You know, I think it was one attack from Madrid, and he was miles behind. Like that's not to say he's crap, but I think he suits different games in in that case. Will Miller and, and Genie get you that? Probably, yeah. But then you have got options <coughs> off the bench. I think you take each game as it comes. Thiago was talking to different games. Man United are playing for that, for example. But I'm not sure whether to do it for this. It's just a question of whether Monday's too soon for for, J, for James Milner and Genie for me. I don't. I don't know what's going on with Kata. Um, the only diff- the only change I'd make is a, I think I'd play Jota. Um, you know whether that's like John said is that is that Fabinho in there as well? You drop Bobby a little deeper. I I, I don't know. You get the work right of our Bobby, which I think could help us. But you know we also need goals. I mean, can't I, I? I have a question. I'm playing the front four in case one of them fucking gets injured at the same time. But we need to fucking score goals to win games. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the Diago one's interesting for me because I agree with you, Ross, but then I counter myself as well and go, well, when everyone's pressing yet, yeah, what, what more do you want than a lad who can turn someone straight away and play yeah. a pass? So there's, there's, there's pros and cons to each type of player in this fixture. Going back to the James Milner question, listen, I told you we'd let you play at Leeds in the Premier League. This is your fucking one game because you're not going anywhere next year, son. Um, that's yeah. the that's the reason James Milner's playing at Ellen Road in the Premier League for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably start James Milner. I think he deserves to start. I think we got worse when he when we took him off against yeah, Madrid. To be honest with you, that's, that's, that's enough for me. Yeah. Uh, the, the one little thing you were you were just um, tinkering with it with a with a side before ahead of the starting eleven prediction <laughs> show, and you. Toyed with the left back. Yeah, left I mean, I, I think Robertson needs a rest. I think Salah needs a rest. I don't know whether you can, but like John, I want to see pretty much the same team for between now and the end of the season. But I, but just like John, I don't think you can. So maybe this is the game where you do change it once with a view to I'm going to play them all as much as I can for the end of the game. And it's the last sort of midweek game. So it's the last sort of three games in eight day period. I think the rest here means that you can then, I don't think we're going to see Shimakash. Maybe you see Milner at left back. Yeah. Maybe. Would you, would you, I mean, everyone else has had a rest. Jota's had a rest. Mane's had a rest. Firmino's had a rest. Salah's ploughed on. Yeah. Like there's a reason. He's our best player. He's the only one who scores goals. He's the only one who scores, <laughs> scores goals as well. But he needs a rest. Yeah. Like I think a rest will do him good, and we might see a better Mo Salah between now and the end of the season. Yeah, I, 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 it's it's tough because I think Klopp likes to reward people who deserve to be rewarded, and I think for the for the the shift that was put in by that team, <coughs> it wouldn't shock me, Dad, if he just went with the same starting eleven again. You know, from the, the starting against Real Real Madrid and goes with a, sim, a similar sort of thing, but. I don't know. I don't know if that sends the right message to Jota and it sends the right message to Mane in particular. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. As Chris said, you know, Bielsa found a way to get at us, which everyone saw as a blueprint for, for the way to beat us. And it'd be interesting to see whether Klopp comes up with his own tactical switch to, to, to counter that because pretty much, you know, Bielsa will do the same. Um so it, it, 
I mean, obviously that will determine who he plays. I mean, on on any of them, there's only six or seven games to the end of the season. Who's, who needs a rest? Yeah, you know, get out there and play. I mean, yeah. Mo Salah, let him rest when he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, true. Like, well, but Salah, Salah will have not no, on our time, Mo. No, Salah will have no time for for the rest of the thing. Really. He's come this no, far, no. and he's got a golden boot to win. That's sure. that's where his focus. That's, that's where his focus will be. And but it's it's on the other ones really. And like Jota, you know, he's actually not been. You know, he's not been as impactful the last couple of the last couple of games. Uh, Mane a bit of adrenaline just, coming back from injury. Yeah. We see that a lot. Mane's in a bit of a hole at the moment. Bobby Firmino's been sparkling. So for me, for me, you know, he got subbed off as well. So I think he's got. There's no reason why Bobby doesn't start this game. It's just that again, do we go four two three one? And if we do, I've got no problem with it being Fabinho and um, Thiago as the two, and then go and put the other lads up front. I think that's as, as good as anything. But do we want to? Are we going to match Leeds' aggression in the middle of the park? And if that's the case, then put, put Milner in there and, and go for that. I like Milner, Thiago, actually, because I think the point's right. Look at what Real Madrid were doing to us in the first game. We were trying, you know, trying to press, but you, you, you beat press by being able to go shoulder to shoulder when you need to. But you're right, being able to to play your way out of tricky situations so your best ball playing players at, at some times is definitely the right thing. It's, a, it's an the, the one thing that Leeds do very similar to Manchester City in this, in this regard, and, and, and they do it really well, Liverpool at their absolute best do it really well as well, is teams who, who press out the pitch force other teams to go wide. And we've always done it to Manchester City. And and when they started to get, I think, the better of us in games was when they actually got working down the wings really well. Leeds did it really well. They played out from the back. They'll play it to the right back under pressure and they'll play the ball inside to the midfielder. It's the midfielder who comes on to their midfielder that's the most important player. So someone like a Milner or a, or a Fabinho in that situation, when they play out from the press, is probably really important for Liverpool. Excellent. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on then around the weekend's fixtures. Um, so Chelsea uh, actually don't play till Tuesday. Tuesday because they've got an FA Cup game which I'd completely forgotten was a thing um, both Leicester and Chelsea are in FA Cup action this weekend so Friday night Everton versus Spurs um, Everton are in uh, just a, a dire mess aren't they always and forever there's Did a I chance... know Calvert-Lewin either I don't know why he was missing the last game I don't know whether it was injured he's picked up a red card I've no idea he's injured, he's injured, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, he didn't so look the same without you him. would fancy Spurs to take everything from Everton there at Goodison Park Newcastle saying that space in a mess as well well yeah I mean that's that's the one isn't it did you Mourinho see that fighting for his job you see someone got Deli Ali on the live stream saying touch your cap if you Mourinho out yeah I mean I Jesus mean yeah right don't it could have been touching yeah. his cap and they've put the comments on but yeah, either way yeah um, caught in 4k my friend caught in 4k <laughs> um Newcastle hosting West Ham dad you know on paper West Ham should should walk that but it's got it's got the hallmarks of the kind of game where if West Ham are going to stumble and they're going to fall out of the you know the, the top four race. This is actually the kind of games where you do it when you're not quite at the level to be in the top four. Yeah, a few games ago, Newcastle hit rock bottom, didn't they? And uh, they've they've sort of come back up for you know oddly. Um, and I, I think Newcastle are much more difficult this weekend than they would have been a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Can I just say, can West Ham just bore off, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what Thanks I mean? Thanks for playing West Ham. <laughs> but that, you're great. You've had your fun. Now get off. The right thing side. about West, West Ham is they're losing players as well, aren't yeah. they? Good. I think Antonio's injured now and uh, Rice is gone. Yeah. So you know, that'll start to tell eventually. And Newcastle yeah. getting players back as well. I think Max Mann came on against Burnley. You know, he got a player kicked in the face and they still won beat Burnley 2 1. So with the confidence for them. And the pressure that's around them is, you know, incredible. Hopefully, they can just do us favour. Yeah, I agree with that. Fingers crossed on that one. And then, obviously, the the Saturday evening, you've got Chelsea hosting Man City in the FA Cup. Or is that I've had that a bit of Wembley? We won't have it to the semi finals. Um, so yeah, big game for Chelsea, which obviously doesn't impact the league directly. But as I say, it does mean their game has moved back to the Tuesday, which will then have a knock on impact to them, and they've got the Champions League loom and just. Hopefully more games at this stage of the season will be too much to bear. And is there a point where they take their eyes off? I hope so. Um, Leicester, I've got um, Southampton on Sunday in the FA Cup. Southampton dire form at Le- the moment. They're going to win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> it's one of those things. Is we, we had this brief chat, didn't we, Chris, about the Leicester thing. When you, I think Leicester in particular, when you get your eyes on in sight of a of a cup, I think they've got the situation where they they've, they've got the the hurt of last season of falling out of the top four late doors. 
they've now got a piece of silverware to play for and they've got Liverpool breathing and Chelsea and West Ham breathing down the necks. They're the one I'm looking at them. They like you know t- in, t- in terms of like survival of the fittest picking off the Oh, you're on the, the Serengeti here. Oh yeah. god, yeah, yeah. I'm looking I'm like, you know, I'm I'm the, I'm, a, I'm a giant cat wiggling its bum yeah, ready to a pounce. Small like. wildebeest at the back <laughs> that you've got your eye on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that that that's it for Leicester. There'll come a point we talk about these I think Chelsea have got the squad to compete on multiple fronts. They've got, I mean, like Kai Havertz just turned up last week. It was like he's been there all season. What about? He, just, he just went. Right, I'm, I'm just going to turn up and be the Kai Havertz from last from nice last season. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas Le- at Leicester, obviously, and Ianacho stepped up big time for them every week, but they are they are faltering. Well, look, the, the, the big thing with Leicester at the moment for me is I don't really care what happens with regards to semi final of the FA Cup. What's important is that we win our game mm-hmm. because they're not playing. Yeah. And if a team is struggling with the pressure of being chased and also with the the fears from what happened last season, losing out on the top four on the last day to Manchester United, being a point behind them or being or them having to win to go back ahead of maybe a Chelsea or something like that, that's big pressure and that's what they'll fold under. Yeah, exactly that. You know, there's a chance that it's to go above Chelsea. There's a chance to close the gap to a point on less on Leicester City before they next play. And that's that's what this bit what Liverpool is all about uh right now. And then yeah, Chelsea plays play Brighton on a Tuesday, which you'd imagine they they come away with, but you just don't know after the exertions. That's a that's a big Champions League game, then a big FA Cup game. Then you've got uh, uh you've you've got Brighton just rock up and Brighton make things really awkward. Did, for teams. If, Bright, if Brighton are a bit like us last night, actually they play really good football, but they just never score goals, yeah. do they? Like we're just a really really good Brighton. <laughs> Such a good, <laughs> we're just a good Brighton. <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, right, yeah. So that is that. Um, let's have some score predictions, Dad. What do you think the score is going to be? The Four three oh, again. Why not? Nice of the season. Why not, Ross? Yeah. Uh, two all. Oh yeah. E. Three two Liverpool. Yeah, I'll take. I'll take it. I'll take a three two four three. And why not? Big mad game of footy. Loads of goals. Loads of hard goals. 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 frogs. Yeah, just make. We don't score goals. Really we're going to score goals in the first half, you. Yeah, all four, oh. and then and then and then threaten the collapse in the second, <laughs> and then go ah, get over there. Whatever it takes, Liverpool just win another game of football. That's all we want, really. I don't care how we do it, just do it. Um, yes. Thank you. Big, big game. Nothing but big games between now and the end of the season. We are here with you guys all the way. If you want bonus content, uh, you can become a YouTube member and get one bonus show every week, or you can subscribe on theredmentv.com and get an absolute ton of podcast and video and a whole suite of documentaries, features, and interviews. Uh, it's a Liverpool streaming service just for you guys to keep you tied it over between games. Uh, there's also an amazing competition uh, running for Club Legend subscribers. More details will follow at the end of the video. But yes, gentlemen, thank you so so much for joining me for this one. Thank you. Do check out the uh, Start 11 prediction. And again, that featurette on uh, Cop Chronicles coming over the weekend. And yeah, we'll be back on Monday with the Watch Along. See you there. Hey everyone, what's happening? We've got an amazing competition for you guys right now. You can be in with the chance of winning this exclusive Liverpool pin badge set. All you've got to do is go over and sign up or upgrade your subscription to Club Legend over on the RedmenTV.com, which is our Liverpool streaming service platform. Not only that, will you also get access to an incredible suite of Liverpool content, post-match stuff, news, subscription shows of us based in the studio, but not just that as well documentaries series features and interviews with liverpool legends past and present it's basically like netflix for liverpool fans and if you sign up a club legend you get a bunch of perks as well free merchandise discounts on a whole host of things and yes you are entered into monthly prize draws and this month that is that incredible pin badge set so go over to the redmen tv.com right now sign up and get involved